who actually makes the best cordless air compressor. Let's go ahead and test them and find out. So I went ahead here and got a weight of each one. Now I did this without the battery, Ryobi coming in at the lightest and the Milwaukee coming in at the heaviest. Now I'm gonna start each one of these here so you can hear the difference. The mic will be four foot in front of each one of these. Now DB, I measured this when I did the battery testing up close. So this is roughly five inches away. And then I also did it four feet away in front of the air compressor. Now, one thing that's interesting here is actually at four feet away, the Milwaukee was quieter. Max PSI, of course, this was tested with the highest performance battery. With Ryobi coming in the lowest and then DeWalt here coming in with the highest if you run that 60 volt flex volt battery. If you're only using the 20 volt battery, the max PSI is 125. Pretty simple here, gonna go ahead and test each one with the available batteries. Now, speaking of using all the available batteries, uh, this is just a timed comparison to 90 PSI. Now, this is not comparing between the different brands. This is more so so you can see the comparison if you wanna know, say, what a 1.7 power stack does versus a six amp power flex volt. But overall here, uh, there's really no performance gain in using a higher amp hour battery. The only thing here you're going to gain is runtime. Fill time to 90 PSI. So I did take those numbers and I adjusted them to one gallon volume with the Metabo here actually coming out on top at 20 seconds then the Milwaukee at 24 and that new Makita there at 27. With again, the Ryobi coming in last. So yes, we do have that data there that's calculated, which kind of gives us a ballpark on performance. I do have a gauge here with a flow rater for air. Go ahead and just try to test the CFM here. So with the CFM testing, for the most part, the ranking mirrors that calculated one gallon volume. So Metabo coming here, in on top at 1.6 CFM at 40 PSI, and then the Ryobi coming in at 0.6. Same thing at 90, Metabo at 1.2, Ryobi at 0.3 here. Now another thing I do want to point out is couplers here. All of them will accept the standard industrial coupler, but what about the high flow? Your automotive style, Harbor Freight's high flow here. And here you can see that data in this table. So yeah, the majority of them only accept that standard industrial coupler. Yes, down the road, you may want to change that out for a safety coupler. I'll leave the link below to an older video where I did some flow testing of these couplers and also looking at safety couplers. Let's take a quick look at each of these. Uh, here we have the Ryobi, yes, at the lowest performance, but keep in mind, it is the most compact. Now, some other things I do want to point out, and if you're in a dusty environment, yeah, it doesn't come with a filter here installed on the unit. I just don't know if I could justify that $180 for this. Uh, I would consider this, again, like the Ryobi DIY. 
It does have a few drawbacks, being that there is not a filter that you can clean. And for some reason, they put the old style screw drain on here, whereas the Ryobi just had that ball valve. Now you do have a bigger tank here with the heart versus the Ryobi. And the overall size, of course, is much bigger. But I think MSRP wise, this comes in at a lot better price tag of 115 versus that Ryobi at 180. Craftsman, yeah, gonna classify this too as DIY. Again, no filter here that you can clean out. You've got that old style drain. You do have a 2.5 gallon tank and a lot better performance over the Ryobi and the heart. But I do think it's a little bit expensive here with an MSRP of 190. Now the DeWalt, this is kind of right on the line for me between professional and DIY. Again, no cleanable filter and it does have a ball valve for drain with the same tank capacity of 2.5 gallons. Now the Bauer here, this may shock you, it shocked me by the performance. I'm actually gonna put this in the professional category for a few reasons. You do have a ball valve on the bottom. It had great performance up near the top. Actually the only one here with a small compartment which comes with a little assortment of accessories. Now yes, uh, if this plastic gets hit, feels pretty brittle, maybe over time this latch breaks, uh, but yeah, it's nice to see that it did come with those. It also has a cleanable air filter on the back. One thing to note, if you do buy this, you do have to install this. Another feature of this that none of the others have is you have dual battery slots. Now, no, you won't gain any performance by putting two batteries in here. The only thing you will gain is extended runtime. Now, I am a little concerned possibly on reliability. It really doesn't have a soft start. But overall, when you consider the performance and the features, you can't really beat it considering it is the cheapest one here MSRP wise at $100. Now with the Milwaukee here again, I would say this is one for commercial use. You do have that cleanable air filter here. One thing to note, it's not kind of in the most easiest spot to get into access, but it does have a cleanable air filter. Overall, great performance, a little bit heavy, but from my testing, it's the quietest one here, even quieter than the Makita there. Now it does have a couple weird things, one being that blow off at the end where it almost sounds like a truck with air brakes. And then also the configuration almost makes me feel like it should be set up like this, considering the handle here is up on top, but yeah, there's no bumpers on the bottom. But MSRP comes in at 380 for the tool itself. Metabo found to have the actual highest performance here. I was quite surprised by that. Definitely something I would consider for commercial use. It does have that cleanable air filter here on the back, and it will work with the 36 volt AC adapter. Now you won't gain any performance from this, but of course you have at that point almost unlimited runtime. But this AC adapter setup, MSRP wise, is about $166, so it is quite expensive. But that's definitely a benefit that the others don't have. And the Makita 40 volt, commercial grade, cleanable air filter, definitely right there with the performance and right there with Milwaukee coming in at the quietest. I did put this table here together with those overall specs. If you're curious, uh, you can go ahead and pause it here. But definitely overall, some interesting results. I will say I was surprised that we didn't see a performance boost when we went up with higher amp hour batteries and using that AC adapter on the Metabo. And the other shocker was how good that Bauer actually is. Now reliability, who's to say? If you do have one, let us know in the comments below. And also if any of you have any of these other ones, let us know how they have performed in the comments below. But I really think in all reality, it depends on if you're gonna use it for DIY or commercial. 
and what platforms you're currently running. So hopefully this video helped you in determining which one to get. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.